In the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to cover 10 essential path editing features by using them to create this square knot illustration. To start, I'll go to the squares and rectangles tool here and create a rectangle. I'm going to turn off the fill color of this by clicking the red X down here, and I'll give it a black stroke by holding shift and clicking the black color swatch. I'll also right click the stroke width value here and make it a bit wider, two should be good. Now if I go to the node tool up here, I don't currently have access to the rectangle's nodes. I can resize it and round the corners, but I can't really modify its shape. And that's because I need to turn the rectangle into a path first. This leads us to the first and most important path editing feature, Object to Path. To use Object to Path, I can go up to the Path menu and choose Object to Path. Now I have access to the nodes and can modify them however I want using the node tool. But I actually do want to keep it rectangular for the moment, so I'll press Ctrl Z a couple times to put the nodes back where they were. What I want to do instead is round a couple of the corners of this path. This leads to the next feature, the Corners Path Effect. To use it, I first need to open the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects. Then I can click the plus button at the bottom of the dialog and click the icon for corners here. With this effect, if I start increasing the radius parameter in here, it will round all of the corners by the same amount. And down here, I can change the mode that the effect uses. The default mode is fillet, which rounds the corners. I can also do inverse fillet, which is the opposite of fillet. The chamfer mode bevels the corners, and I can change the number of steps it uses with the chamfer steps parameter. Finally, I can do inverse chamfer, which is the opposite of chamfer. I want to round the corners, so I'll put it back on fillet mode, and I only want to round the top right and bottom left corners, so I'll set radius back to zero. To round a particular corner, I can use the node tool to drag these green diamond handles at the corner. To round more than one corner at a time, I can select one node by dragging a selection box over it, then select another node by holding shift and dragging a selection box over it, and now I can round them together by the same amount. I'm going to drag along the bottom line here as far as it will go, then release. Now before continuing, I want to finalize the path effect by doing object to path. This gives me access to all of the nodes and makes it so I can't accidentally change the rounding of the corners. I'll now go to the select tool, click the path to show the rotation handles, grab one of the corner rotation handles, and while holding control to restrict the angle, I'll rotate it counterclockwise until it says in the status bar that it has been rotated negative 45 degrees. Then I'll click the path again to get back to the scale handles, grab a scale handle, and while holding control to maintain the width to height ratio, I'll scale it down pretty small and move it out of the way. Next I'm going to create the rope path. First I'll go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle here. Then I'll go to the circles and ellipses tool and create an ellipse overlapping the right side of the rectangle. And I want to center these horizontally, so I'll select them both, open the align and distribute dialog with this button up here, and click this button to center them on the horizontal axis. I now want to turn these objects into a single path. For this, I'll use another path editing feature called the Union Path Operation, which is located in the Path menu. If I click this, the selected shapes become a single path, and because they were overlapping, they now share a single stroke. I'll also give it a fill color, like this dark brown here. Now bring the stroke width back down to 1. I also don't need the line at the left side of the path here, so I'll go to the node tool, select the two left nodes, and click this button up here. One more thing I'll do is round these two corners using the corners path effect. That should work. Now I'll finalize it. Next I want to take this first path I created and copy it along the spoon shaped path. For this I'll use the pattern along path path effect. First I need to select the small path and copy it into the clipboard with Control C. Then I'll select the big path, click the plus button in the path effects dialog, and click the icon for pattern along path. And here I'll click this paste path button. By default, with the pattern copies parameter set to single stretched, this took the copied path and stretched a single copy of it along the entire big path. I can also do a single copy without stretching, repeated copies along the path, and repeated copies that get stretched in order to fill up the entire path. This is what I want. However, the copies are spaced out too far apart. To fix this, I'll first zoom in by holding down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Then I'll decrease the spacing parameter over here until the copies are lined up. Perfect. I can also change the width of the pattern if I want, as well as play around with the offsets. 
All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to duplicate it by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Then I'll press the H key to flip the duplicate horizontally. And I'll move it to the right while holding control to keep them horizontally aligned. Right there should be good. Now I'll give this one a lighter brown fill. Next, I want to make it so the light brown rope appears to go underneath the dark brown rope at the center here. To do this, I'm first going to right click the dark brown rope and duplicate it. Then I'll go to the pin tool and create a diamond shaped path here that covers the intersection of the two ropes. I'll create one down here as well. Now I want to turn these into a single path by selecting them both and going to Path, Union. Now that this is a single path, I can use it to cut out the parts of the dark brown rope duplicate that the path is overlapping. This is the function of the next path editing feature, the intersection path operation. To use it, I first need to hold shift and select the rope path, then I go to path, intersection. This leaves me with just the part of the bottom path that was being overlapped by the top path. I'll change the fill color of this just so I can see it better. The next thing I want to do is use this path to hide the parts of the light brown rope that are under it. However, the feature I'll use for this doesn't like strokes very much. And wherever there are strokes in the top path, it will leave gaps there in the bottom path. To fix this, I'll first need to use another feature called Stroke to Path. Stroke to Path basically turns the stroke of a path into a separate path, and to use it, I can go to Path, Stroke to Path. If the path also had a fill color, Stroke to Path creates a group consisting of the stroke path and the fill path. I can double click the group to enter into it and modify the individual paths if I want. However, what I want to do is turn the stroke path and the fill path into a single path so that it takes up the entire area of the group. To do this, I'll first select a different object to get back outside of the group. Then I'll select the group again, right click it, and choose ungroup. Now I can union the two paths into a single path. Now that the stroke problem has been taken care of, I can finally use this path to hide the parts of the light brown rope. For this, I'll use a feature called inverse clipping. First, I'll hold shift and select the light brown rope then I'll go to Object, Clip, Set Inverse Clip. Now those parts of the light brown rope are invisible, making it appear to be underneath the dark brown rope and giving the ropes an intertwined appearance. And as you can see in the Path Effects dialog, Inverse Clipping actually uses a path effect called Power Clip. I also have the option to do Normal Clipping by unchecking Inverse Clip down here. This hides all of the parts of the bottom path that weren't overlapped by the top path. But of course I want the opposite of this, so I'll recheck Inverse Clip. Next, to add a little bit of detail to the ropes, I'll add a few small lines going across the pattern path here. For this, I'll first go to the pin tool, click here, hold control to keep the line horizontal, click over here, then right click to finish the path. Now I'll go to the select tool and duplicate the path, then press the down arrow key a few times. Then I'll duplicate both of these and move them down some while holding control. Then I'll duplicate all four of these and move them down. Eight paths should be enough. I also want to put equal spacing between these paths, which I can do by selecting them all, going to the Line and Distribute dialog, and clicking this button. Next, I want to combine these paths. This brings us to the next feature, which is the Combine Path Operation. Combine is similar to Union in that it will turn the selected objects into a single path. However, Combine makes the objects subpaths of a single path, meaning that their nodes are still fully editable. For example, if I create a couple overlapping objects, select them both, and go to Path, Combine, they become a single path as shown by the bounding box around them, but the original nodes of the objects are still accessible. And I can actually do another path operation, Break Apart, or Split Path, which is similar, to turn the subpaths into separate paths again. Okay, with that long explanation out of the way, I'll select all of the lines I created and do Combine on them. Now I'm going to click the path to get the rotation handles and rotate it negative 45 degrees so that it matches the rotation of the pattern path. Then I'll move it to about right here. Next I want to cut off the parts of this path that are outside of the pattern path. For this I'll use the final path editing feature that we'll look at, which is the Cut Path Path Operation. First I need to duplicate the pattern path, then I'll hold Shift and select the path of lines and go to Path. Cut Path. Cut Path uses the stroke of the top path to cut through all of the strokes of the bottom path and separates them. So now all of these are separate paths that have each been cut into two pieces. And I can now select and delete all of the outside pieces. I now want to select all of these paths here and do Path Combine. Then I'll copy this new pattern path with Ctrl C, select one of the ropes, 
Go to the Path Effects dialog, choose Pattern Along Path in the list, and click the Paste Path button. I'll do the same for the other one. Finally, I'll finalize all the path effects. And that's it for the 10 path editing features that we'll learn today. If you would like to learn some more, be sure to click one of the videos on the screen. Thanks for watching.